So by calling its messages. So messaging is the integral part of it. And message, messaging is a wide topic again. And with respect to the, um, so wide topic in, in sense, uh, the messages can be um, uh, between the processes, between the threads, or it can be out of process, out of machine, out of networks, and so on. So the message is a wide, wide concept to talk about. It's pretty much, uh, um, it's a message passing is uh, a communication channel through which uh, multiple objects talk to each other. Uh, in object-oriented programming, it is uh, pretty much the same, uh, wherein the objects involved in talking to each other uh, 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 while running the program. So to make your program successfully, the objects will communicate to each other. Uh, in, if you again translate this to a real-time picture, uh, if you say, uh, um, a, an object, uh, a human, right? Uh, say, a employee, an employee, uh, employee, uh, and relationship with the uh, with the department. Say, for example, so uh, there is an association between the department and an employee because the employee belongs to a department. So, um, so they both communicate to each other in one way or the other during your real-time application. So that kind of messaging is. Uh, yeah, is provided using the concept called message message passing. Okay, um, so the message passing in in this example, it's a very same example wherein I'm passing the uh, values to the uh, to define the state, and also invoking the methods um, to uh, to alter the state. In other words, okay, and uh, so the real time uh, object in the real time is going to uh, reflect the state that has been modified by the code. Okay. Um, the next, so the core concept uh, called the encapsulation comes into play. So encapsulation uh, 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 means that the uh, internal representation of an object is generally hidden from uh, view outside of the object's definition. So it's uh, pretty much uh, hiding uh, the data structures or the state of a class interface. Uh, it means multiple things. Um, number one, uh, you can actually, uh, it, me it also means that the internal implementation details has been hidden from the outside. Okay, so if you see the previous one, when I'm setting C1 is equal to, uh, C1 dot make is equal to Nissan, Nissan I really don't know what's, uh, what's happening internally uh, with make. Uh, make implementation or even I when I'm calling the dot start I even don't know what's the internal logic doing it which you do not worry about again so even in in uh, real time if you translate uh, if you're playing a uh, audio system all you care is that audio should be audible and nothing else so when you play uh, when you hit the play button it should start playing when you hit pause button it should stop so what as an end user uh, you expect from that uh, functionality of uh, the behavior of that particular object is that you don't really worry about what's happening internally. You all worry about what you want from outside. So the internal implementation logic is hidden or encapsulated. Uh, so capsule, if you remember, it's capsuling means putting things inside and you don't worry about it. So relate the term to encapsulation. So when you encapsulate uh, the uh, uh, implementation from outside, uh, the concept translate to the encapsulation. Um, so one of the example we have here is um, uh, using a property. Um, I'm having a local variable here, which is a private member. By default, if you declare any uh, local variables, it, it defaults to a private. Uh, in this example, I didn't specify explicitly private, but uh, uh, implicitly it defaults to private. So the int unique ID we have seen in the previous examples that this is a local variable and this cannot be accessed from the uh, from the instance of this class. So this can be accessed only using the unique ID uh, as a property. And what's happening within the unique ID? Unique ID is actually uh, updating or returning the value that is saved to the local variable. So what this achieved, uh, this is a simple example, uh, using properties you can uh, implement the encapsulation. Uh, in, in sense, this adds a um, layer of interface for the end user using a public keyword. 
So we haven't gone through the more of the access modifiers so far. So we have seen only the private and public. Uh, so the public will get, uh, only using public uh, access modifiers. You can expose the members to the um, the one who is using your class. In this case, so all the members you can access are of public. Okay. So encapsulation is a pro, uh, is a um, method of uh, uh, hiding the your internal implementation. It can be achieved using the access modifiers um, and exposing the private uh, access modifiers can be applied even for the, your methods. So method implementation, nobody really care. All they need is they call it and get it. Okay. So so every aspect is actually transformed to a real world. Uh, that's the key uh, uh, note that we need to keep in mind when we all when we talk about the object oriented. So any keyword that you see down the line uh, with respect to the code right now uh, will be transformed to the real world objects. Okay. If it is not, then you're actually deviating away from the object oriented principles. Okay. The next one is uh, abstraction. I think before uh, we step in uh, to the next topic, let me take a quick demo. Uh, I think uh, we have already covered this uh, um, aspects uh, before, uh, so I don't want to go and uh, do a small demos. But still, for those who want to uh, uh, recap or revise their memory, I would uh, I will still allow to do it. Okay. So the so far we have uh, seen uh, the the class and objects. I will just like to uh, put a small demo there. I'll just run the code that I already have. Uh, in in this case, I just have a high level class uh, stating an automobile, um, and I'm creating an instance of that uh, as a car here. I'm trying to. This is the same example that we see in the slides. And um, so we see the uh, uh, automobile is the class and car is the object. So that's a distinction there. Uh, in other words, we refer this as an instance member. Um, so car is an instance of an automobile. So if you see the hierarchical representation of your entire automobile industry, car is car falls one of them. So I'm trying to demonstrate that here. And uh, and of course, the car has a make, model, wheels, and so on. Um, and uh, encapsulation aspect uh, is a pretty much the method. So I just classified the whole automobile into a state and behavior, wherein within the state, I have a set of properties and a couple of other things. Uh, the constructor and the property. So this is one of the property which uh, actually implements the encapsulation, wherein it hides the private member, which is the model here. This is a private member. It is hiding the private member uh, from being exposed outside, and it is controlling the access to the private members using a public property. So here I have a control on uh, uh, what values I can set and how uh, I can return it out. So that's the advantage of having property. So this is a typical implementation of an encapsulation principle. Okay. So if I run this code, it's pretty much uh, um, calling three uh, methods of the automobile class and uh, the values that are assigned to it are Nissan Maxima and latitude longitude. So I just had a latitude longitude to the, uh, as a state uh, because car is a mobile uh, object so it can move from one uh, location to another location. So it tracks the state of the uh, object that's one of the uh, means uh, uh, I just added and it has number of uh, wheels of four. Okay, so uh, that's still the uh, concept of encapsulation. So we'll move ahead. Next comes the abstraction. So abstraction uh, uh, is a very, very confusing topic, though different authors uh, define it in different ways. Uh, so I see this is one of the best way to uh, explain it or visualize uh, what does an abstraction means. Okay. So in in general, if you look at the English definition, uh, uh, abstraction is a concept or idea not associated with a specific instance. 
okay so that's the key there and if you understand the basic English meaning then you will know what is an abstraction is okay so what it means is is a concept or an idea not to associate any with any specific instance okay for example um, if you look at the chart below so this is a pretty, uh, pretty much the animal classification diagram um, or chart so in this I uh, we have all the five uh, classifications of the animal kingdom wherein we have mammals, uh, reptiles, uh, fish, birds and so on. So if you look at this chart, what ha uh, the definition of the abstraction is uh, pretty much clear there. If you start defining a, a program that represents the animal kingdom, so how will you design your classes? So it's a pretty much a, uh, you follow a chart which classifies all the identified uh, objects and generalize them to form into a groups so that you always ensure that you will keep only the information within a given class to what it is needed and what can be um, generalization concept uh, in the UML terms means uh, you're actually grouping them grouping the related objects into one so that you can share the commonality so why we are sharing commonality? Why? Because we want to reuse the commonality. So remember um, the core principles behind all the programming uh, uh, patterns or paradigm is to reusability, extendability, scalability, everything. So everything falls uh, under the reusability. So as simple as I don't want to write the same code a number of times in my application. So it, it's all write once and use many times. So, uh, so that's the principle goes behind everything. Um, so reusability is a key concept and the abstraction gives you uh, that flexibility to uh, have the reusability driven at multiple levels. Uh, but this is again a thought process again as I was talking about object oriented thought process uh, is, uh, is a thought process that will think about the real time objects classified into a chart like this. So if you have, uh, if there, were, there was none or no biologist or zoologist to sit, uh, sitting around and try to classify all these animals, we would never had this chart. So we, they have classified based on some common characteristics each of these objects possess in the real world. Okay, so insects have their own characteristics and uh, amphibians have their own characteristics. But though all of these uh, characteristics are shared as a common, they are called animal character, animal classification. So they are belongs to animal and another another dimension to it is the all of them are living beings, uh, living things, so on. So that's a kind of abstraction when you say so uh, it's a concept or idea not to associate with any specific instance. So the abstraction for in this diagram, if you see, the animal is an abstract layer. Or in the next level of abstraction is insects for animal. And at the same time, animal at the high level and the low level is again the respective subsets, uh, which is insects or amphibians or mammals or reptiles or fish, birds and so on. So that's how the classification goes on. So what you're achieving with this, we're achieving the common characteristics as grouped as one. So when I have an abstract class, so if I if I say uh, in the real car example, um, I have defined the automobile as an abstract class. Okay, so we'll just see the next one. Yeah, this is a similar example uh, wherein uh, the animal classification is shown, wherein animals becomes the abstract layer at the top, and the respective uh, are classified down down the, down the line okay so in this this chart this is a typical real time uh, code example that i have <clears throat> wherein i'm just classified the automobile industry wherein we already see uh, the automobile class and uh, which is an abstract class okay i just changed it uh, to uh, to the more the first part so i will roll it back um, to an abstract class so in, uh, in the coding perspectives, uh, you can achieve abstraction using the uh, abstract class and also inheritance um, and also using your um, uh, 
uh, access modifiers of course implicitly everything uh, falls under the same root um, so if you see the arrows that are uh, pointing at out uh, the arrow represents the generalization in UM, UML terms in other words in uh, object oriented terms it is an inheritance uh, link so if you see the truck is inheriting automobile car is inheriting automobile SUVs such scooter and so on are inheriting from automo automobile directly because they all fall under the same umbrella but here the flying car is actually inheriting a car because a flying car is a special class of car uh, so that's why it's rooted out from a car so although it looks and looks like a car but this car normally runs on the road the specialization of the flying car is that it can fly and also drive on the road so that's kind of a classification we have here okay and remember uh, this diagram also uh, show you one uh, important message here. The thing is um, we can see car, okay, we can see car and we can see tons of cars out there on the road and flying car is also we can see right now in YouTube. Uh, trucks we can see in day-to-day -day life, SUVs I can, scooters I can. So these are all objects that I can see uh, outside. So I can cre create an instance of this to become an object. So the object represents the real-time world, real-time object. So the automobile, there's nothing called automobile, right? So there's nothing called automobile that I can see. So automobile is a concept, it's a classification. So that cannot be instantiated, right? So if you translate this diagram um, to the real-time objects, so there is nothing called an automobile, only that an automobile is just a high-level classification of all these uh, objects that you see. So that's why so high level classification cannot exist in the real world. So the classification is just a thought process or an idea or a concept um, which can be only on books. So that's why abstract classes cannot be instantiated. So when I make this um, abstract, so that's what the error shows. Okay, so we cannot create um, an instance of the abstract class or interface. So interfaces are other way to uh, achieve the abstraction. So you cannot create an um, uh, instance of them. So if you translate that rule in your programming language into real-time um, implementation, you can uh, clearly say that you cannot create instance of an abstract class or interface so you will never forget it okay so that's the abstraction